Good morning, television family. We're back for another exciting day of Wake Up Anchee Valley, Wednesday, 27th day of March, 2024. I'm Dan Coots, your host. It feels like rain. It just does. And well, by golly, it's starting to rain just a little lightly and it's going to start coming down a little more intensely, if you will. We're not talking about a deluge of rain. We're not going to get a lot of rain, but we're going to have light rain pretty much all day today, right? Till about five or six o'clock tonight. So get ready for a wet one, cool one too. It's some cold and uh, wet rain. Wet rain, I think all rain by definition is wet. Um, it's gonna be cold too, uh, colder than normal anyway, by a good 10 degrees. We'll be dealing with this unsettled weather today, tonight, into Thursday. We start transitioning Thursday night into some nicer weather. Friday looks good. Easter weekend looks fantastic. It's gonna be a beautiful weekend to do whatever it is you wanna do over the holiday weekend and right out into Monday. It's looking good. A forecast I think you're gonna like once we get through the next 48 hours or so. He is coming up plus the news, plus sports cracking. How do you snap an eight game losing streak? You play the mighty ducks of Anaheim. That'll, that'll, that'll cure what ails you. They did so because Anaheim, well, quite frankly, they're not very good. And we whipped up on them and highlights some of very exciting and entertaining baseball game that we brought to you yesterday on the NCAA Life Channel, the West Valley Rams visiting the Wenatchee Panthers at Recreation Park. Highlights of that, all the prep scores as well. And speaking of sports, it's playoff time for the Seattle Kraken. They are the number four seed out of the Western Division. They will play the number five seed, the Kelowna Rockets. Best of seven, first round of the WHL playoffs. It begins Friday night at the Town Toyota Center. Our normal Wednesday visit will be with Austin Drade, the broadcasting voice of the wild. And that's coming up in the back half of the program. And Mike Bignotti has an opinion as well. Let's tour, let's do it. Our cameras around the valley and you can just see that we're just on the Prepasis of some rain coming. Just a little bit of light rain just about 10 minutes ago. I had a chance to pop outside the door just to see if it was raining yet. Just a couple of light drizzles, but it's going to be coming as the day progresses. Widespread precipitation. Everybody in our viewing area is going to get rain. Again, not heavy rain, just consistent light rain all day today. That's from our cross camera. I believe it's already raining in Leavenworth, at least lightly. And the upper elevation is a bit of a rain-snow mix. The magic number, you can see a little bit of snow coming down. The snow level right now is at 2,400 feet, and that's about where that camera is. It's going to go up to 4,000 feet later on this afternoon. Then it's going to dip down to 2,500 feet after midnight tonight. But by that time, most of the rain would have spent its energy. So just a little bit of light snow in the Cascade. Stevens is going to get most of it, and even then, not a lot. A little bit of light snow on Snoqualmie and Blewett coming our way. Only garden camera. Taking a look at that, the beautiful blue skies. It's a bit misleading because it ain't blue. It just looks that way. Yesterday's high, 57. Normal high, 56. Just about normal. Sunrise this morning, 648. Sunset tonight will be at 724. That buys us 12 hours and 36 minutes of daylight. We've gained a lot, over a half an hour of daylight since the, uh, the vernal equinox. That wasn't that long ago. I'm liking these longer days. Rock Island looks something like this. Yes, the golf course is open. Go get them. You can play in the rain, but if it rains, they usually don't let you drive carts on the golf courses because it can mark up the grass and you don't want that. So if you plan on golfing today, bring your ring. I don't like to play golf in the rain. I'll play golf in the wind, cold, heat, any kind of weather that Mother Nature throws your way except rain. I just don't like playing golf in the rain, so I won't be today. I'll be working hard. That's what I'll be doing. Looks like it's already starting to rain up in the Malaga area as well. We're, well, let's get right to it from the National Weather Service. A wet storm system is knocking on our door. It'll be here in about an hour. Rain today, right till about five or six o'clock tonight. Again, not heavy rain, just light, consistent rain all day today. And we'll top off at 46. That's a good 10 degrees below normal. Rain dry, uh, dries out tonight. It'll be done by about nine or so. Some patchy fog, some clouds. Overnight low about 35, partly sunny Thursday, slight chance of rain. Any rain we get tomorrow will be in the morning hours. I don't think it's gonna happen with a high of 53. Then things look pretty good. Sun for the most part on Friday, especially in the afternoon, will get up to 55. By Saturday, will be to 60. By Easter Sunday, 64. By Monday, 
April Fool's Day. April is uh, shaping up nice, 70 and 71. Don't forget, a couple of days ago, we showed you what the Climate Prediction Center thinks April will look like for the entire month, and they predict a warmer than normal April and a slightly drier than normal April, and certainly it's going to begin that way with highs in the lower 70s on Monday and Tuesday. All right, that's the forecast. When we come back, what made news yesterday? We will let you know with the news. It's two minutes away. You're watching Wake Up in Hatchie Valley on the NCAA Life Channel. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Localtel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. select Kubota equipment. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience in the U.S., they offer the versatility and reliability to get the job done right all year round. Right now, bring home select VX and L-Series tractors for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 72 months. Contact your Kubota dealer for details. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Starting to rain lightly here in the Wenatchee Valley. We'll have nothing but clouds and rain today. Again, not heavy doses of rain, just light rain, but pretty much all day. Chilly, too. High of only 47. A little bit of light rain tonight. We start seeing some sunshine Thursday. Lots of sunshine and very pleasant temperatures for Easter weekend. It's eight minutes after the hour. The Chelan Douglas Health District has now identified 58 cases of pertussis or whooping cough, if you will, of, uh, as of uh, March 22nd. The, that number has tripled since March 11th. That's when the last report from the health district said there were 17 cases of pertussis. The health district first confirmed four cases of whooping cough in February that were linked to an unspecified local school. Whooping cough begins with cold-like symptoms, uh, develops into a bad cough, and is spread through large respiratory water droplets. Spring break, of course, is next week, and so the CDHD recommends precautions like avoiding visiting vulnerable individuals if you have have, you think you might have whooping cough. You have to stay home for 24 hours if you are sick. And if you have a fever and you're just not getting any better, by golly, go see your doctor. It's just common sense. A Quincy police sergeant is being hailed with a national award for his life-saving efforts. Back in January, there was a house fire in January of 2023. You remember this? Sergeant Stephen Harder helped to save a disabled 67-year-old woman who collapsed and was unable to flee while her home in the 300 block of L Street Southwest was burning. Harder and a fellow police officer, Jaslyn Silva, crawled through the smoke to find the woman, got her out of the fire, and then performed life-saving CPR. This week, the Carnegie Hero Fund announced Harder was among the recipients of the Carnegie Medal. That's given to people throughout North America who risk their lives to save others. Harder's award specifies that he went beyond the call of duty to perform the rescue. He's also entitled to a financial grant for his efforts. The Eastmont School District heard an update 
on a plan to implement a dual language program at one of its elementary schools. At Tuesday night's meeting, Myra Navarra Gomez, Eastmont's Assistant Director of Special Programs, she explained that dual language programs help some students maintain a language while others learn a new one. Gomez outlined the next steps and planning process and said the district has not yet identified the school for the program. The implementation of dual language is in accordance with the Washington State Superintendent Chris Reichendahl's vision of having a dual language school in every district by the year 2040. Gomez says there is a lot of planning to be done, but her team would work to, with the board to target the 2025-2026 school year to begin the dual language program. Speaking of Eastmont, the school district, Eastmont High School, is looking for a new principal. The candidate will replace Lance Noel, who has been the Eastmont High School principal since the 2013-2014 school year. Noel began his career at the high school in 1996, became the assistant principal in 2007. The principal position opened in March 1st. The district says the applicant screening will begin in early April. The timeline could vary. The district is planning to interview finalists on April 22nd and have their candidate selection the week of May 6th. Uh, the Wenatchee High School students who participate in extracurricular activities will now have access to free snacks thanks to a local nonprofit. The group is called Small Miracles. It's an organization dedicated to ending hunger among Wenatchee Valley children who work with the Wenatchee High School special education classes to facilitate the new program. It'll benefit about 300 students. 10 containers with snacks have already been filled and distributed among spring sports teams and after school clubs. These snack bins continue to be provided as needed throughout the school year. Small Miracles has been a longtime partner of the Wenatchee School District by providing meals to students during summer breaks. And finally this morning, the sister city relationship between the Wenatchee Valley and Misawa, Japan has always been a strong one, but we have to do our part. And that means the first week in May, they'll be coming to see us and they need host families. The Misawa Sister City Association is seeking host families for Japanese students who'll be visiting the Wenatchee Valley from May 1st through the 5th. The 2024 Misawa delegation consists of 20 Japanese students ages 13 to 18. If you want to be a local host family, you're asked to provide a bedroom for one or two students for five nights, five breakfasts, three dinners for the visiting students, transportation to and from group meeting places each morning or afternoon, and a full day of engagement between the hosts and the students on Saturday, May 4th, the day of the Smoke Rowers Grand Parade. East Wenatchee Mayor Geraldine Crawford is coordinating the host family outreach. You can uh, contact her at the email or the phone number on your screen, which we don't have, but get a hold of Geraldine at City Hall. Uh, she'll track you down, trust me on that. That's the news at 13 minutes after the hour. What's going on in the Wenatchee Valley, North Central Washington? We think it's important that you know what's going on, which is why we do a newscast at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on TV, 5, 6, and 10 right here on the NCW Life channel. If you uh, consume your news on your television via the World Wide Web, and a lot of people do, we've got you covered there, too. Our news will be ready for you to watch on our homepage, ncwlife.com, right around 5 o'clock, our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and on our app. And that, my friends, is how you download the app. Pick up your smartphone, get the old QR code. It's pretty self-explanatory. And if there's something out there that you think is newsworthy, you get a hold of us. Send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. Dot com. The Seattle Kraken's eight-game losing streak is over. Thanks, Anaheim, for being really bad. Sports is next. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCAA Life Channel. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear. To provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in health care that's personal and local because we're just like you members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. Are you hungry enough to eat the ass end out of a rhinoceros? I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make a trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. 
Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Sixteen minutes after the hour, the Seattle Kraken's eight-game losing streak is over. They beat the Anaheim Ducks 4-0 on Tuesday night. Joey Decord had a good night, made 12 saves in his third shutout for the Kraken. They got the red jersey on, and the guys know they can't hit him. Oh, it's it! Got it! It's Ellie Tolvanen! Set up beautifully by Matty Veneers. Tolvanen, his first goal in 11 games. And the Kraken are off and running. It doesn't go very high, but it didn't start high. It goes low. Maddie, the quick little play, and Ellie has a strong bottom hand. This thing is bang, bang. And look at the elevation there. He throws those hands up towards the crossbar. But a simple play. And the Kraken, as you mentioned, Johnny. McCann will resettle it to the goal line. Eberle away from Cam Fowler. McCann. Up top, Schultz. Now look it over. McCann downhill a bit. Everly out in front. They score! Get pinballs home! Schwartz on the doorstep. Maybe off Gibson. 3.08 left in the period. Jordan Everly. It's a power play goal. 2 nothing Seattle. Schultz back on it. 13 seconds left on the power play. Here comes Matty Beneers to the outside for Ellie Tolvanen to the slot. Fumble the shot. They score! Cue the Maestro! Oliver Bjorkstrand in the right place at the right time. Power play goal. 3 nothing. Seattle. Oh, a fortunate bounce. As this puck will go from the boards to the middle of the ice. It takes a fortunate bounce. And there's Ollie, right in front of the net, off the skate, and right to Bjorkstrand. There's Minsikoff. Beneers will swing out, jailbreak, Seattle, Beneers, Bjorkstrand, Tolvanen, in, Tolvanen, in, Beneers, he's gone! That's hockey, baby! What a finish! And the whole key play here is I don't think Oliver Bjorkstrand's going to get an assist. But he drives the center lane, pushes back the D. And the key here on this pass is Beneers gives it to Ellie, and then Ellie just moves it right back. No stick handle at all. No chance for Gibson if he goes left to right and then back the other way. No chance for him to get it off the post and in. Back for Larson. Out in front, tipped wide. One second. And that's cracking hockey, baby. Yeah, and the best news is they get to play them again. Maybe they should just play them for the rest of the year. Anaheim uh, and Seattle will meet again tomorrow night, again in Seattle. Mariners played their last game of the year. They didn't count in exhibition baseball in San Diego. They knocked off the Padres 7-6, so they finished spring training 15-13-3. They are off today, opening day, tomorrow night at T-Mobile Park with the Boston Red Sox in town, 7-10. On Root Sports, I can't wait. Prep baseball. Yesterday, the Wenatchee Panthers began league play by shutting out West Valley. 3-0 at Recreation Park in a game we televised. They were out hit by the Rams 4-3, but they still won. The 1-0 pitch on the way to the plate here. Swung on on a fly ball down the left field line. This has a chance to be a fair ball. It is. Extra bases. Skyliman is going to score easily. And Wenatchee is going to take the lead on an RBI double by Matt Butler. 
hopefully work him into the fifth, sixth inning. This pitch swung on and lifted in the air. Short stop, diving for it. Can't get it. The run goes over to third base, and they're going to try to score him. The center fielder bobbles the ball out there, and scoring easily standing up is Owen Urban, and Wenatchee's on top, 2-0. Meanwhile, 0-2 to Martinez. Pitch is bouncing in, gets away from the catcher. Runner from second goes to third. The throw is off the bag, and uh, popping up is the runner, and Butler going to try to score. He will. Wenatchee up 3-0. Sticky situation here for the Panthers and Godfrey. 2-2 pitch on the way is swung on and missed. He swung at a high fastball and missed it. And out recorded, a big out right there, the second out of the inning. Would love to find a hole on the defense here. This pitch swung on a grounded to the shortstop, backhanding the ball as Butler, the throw to first base is in time. He got a beautiful play by Matt Butler, ranging to his right, able to feel the ball and make the throw in time across his body and get the runner out at first base for the final out. No run will score. Two men are left. 3 nothing. Wenatchee on top. You're watching Big Nine Baseball on the NCW Life Channel. Excuse me. Excuse me. Seven innings. What am I thinking? Yeah, we're done. That's it. What actually wins? <laughs> How about that? Three nothing. The final. Uh, really, just going after the batters, trusting the defense behind them, and trusting the catcher to make the right call at the plate. Um, we did the job. I know you guys have some lofty goals this year. Coach was telling me about that. Uh, does it kind of feel really good to knock off that team that has that reputation to kind of work your way towards those goals? Yeah, for sure. Definitely working towards uh, the state tournament. Um, if we play as a team, we have we have it. Things got a little sticky there in the uh, seventh inning, but you guys are able to get the out there. You get a little nervous, Coach? Uh, no, I, I, I trust these boys on defense, and uh, no one's going to throw a strike. So I know it's going to be put in play, and they'll make the play. Well, and that they did, and uh, Butler makes a great play at short there, away from him, gets the ball, and gets that throw across in time. Yeah, he's uh, he's getting better and better at short. Um, you know, a guy with a lot of potential just needs to transfer it onto the field, so it's a lot of work there with him. Panthers in West Valley, by the way, will play a doubleheader on Friday. Other baseball scores in non-league action. Eastmont knocked off Afreda. The final there was, uh, that's the prep soccer scoreboard. In baseball, anyway, Eastmont did beat Afreda 4-2. Uh, Moses Lake beat Eisenhower in baseball 6-5. to five. Uh, Cashmere and Keona Benton, they had a doubleheader in Keona Benton. Cashmere won the first game 4-1, to one, but I think they ran out of daylight because they don't have lights at their baseball field. So the second game, it didn't, you know, non-league. So second game is actually a tie. You don't see that too often. OMAC beat Quincy, and that is not a misprint. Chelan beat Cascade in baseball 22-2 yesterday. Prep soccer scoreboard. The Wenatchee Panthers erased a 3-1 West Valley lead with two late goals. And then Anthony Garcia scored a golden goal in overtime. Panthers beat the Rams in Yakima 4-3. And reigning Big Nine Player of the Year, Edgar Leone, scored the game's only goal in overtime. Eastmont edged Eisenhower in Yakima. 1-0. Moses Lake and Sunnyside played to a tie, very rare in high school soccer, and East Valley defeated Afreda, as you see there, 3 to nothing. In uh, the prep uh, soccer scoreboard among the smaller schools, looks something like that. Cascade beat Chelan 6-0. Quincy shut out Omac, 8-0. Bridgeport just got by Okanagan on the pitch. Brewster, no problems with Patera. Same deal with Liberty Bell. They rolled right over Oroville. Prep softball yesterday. Another doubleheader between Kyona Benton and Cashmere, and Kyona Benton got the best of the Bulldogs in both games, 10 to nothing in game one, five to three in game two. Chelan, 10 run to Cascade, 12 to two. OMAC over Quincy, 10 to eight. Among the smaller schools on the scoreboard, Bridgeport beat Waterville Mansfield, 21 to five. These scores are quite common in prep girls fast pitch softball. Tenasket over Manson, 26 to eight. Okanagan won a football game over Brewster, 17 to nothing. Lake Roosevelt, 14. Liberty Bell, four. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. On this 27th day of March, there are a lot of obscure holidays. I could have chosen National Scribble Day, National Paella Day. I love paella. National R Little Red Wagon Day. It's Manatee Appreciation Day. It's World Theater Day. It's Quirky Country Song Titles Day today. There's a lot of those, but no. Today is National Joe Day. Hello, Joe. What do you know? It's Joe Day. If your name is Joe, this is your day. The name Joseph is Hebrew in origin. It means he will add or God will increase. There are a number of famous Joes. Well, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. There, there's one right there, Joe DiMaggio, my dad's favorite baseball player when he was growing up. Football quarterbacks, Joe Montana, Joe Namath, uh, 
Joe Cocker, Joe Walsh, G.I. Joe, I suppose uh, that counts. The Joe, you would think Joe would be more popular as a name, it really isn't. In 1993, so what, 30 years ago, Joe was the 231st most popular name in the United States. Uh, 10 years later, it was the 596th most popular name in the United States. And just last year, it moved up the charts. Joe is now the 455th most popular name in the United States. You, that's hard to believe, 455th? There's 454 more popular names than Joe? That's what the stats tell me. I wonder who, how they figure that out. I don't know, somebody does. Happy National Joe Day for all you Joes out there. I started my day with a cup of Joe. Today in a history, her name was Mary Mallon. She was asymptomatic of typhoid. So she could carry typhoid fever and she could give it to other people. She just couldn't get it herself. And the problem was Mary Mallon was a cook. Eventually, they figured out she got 23 people sick with typhoid fever, which you don't want to have. Three people died. She refused to be quarantined, and they finally simply forced her into quarantine. Typhoid Mary, Mary Mallon, the first healthy carrier of typhoid. Again, she was asymptomatic. She couldn't get it herself. Finally, after twice being forcefully isolated from the public by health officials, the third time finally took, she was forced into quarantine and never left. She was in the same room until she died 30 years later. She was put into quarantine on this date in 1915. 60 years ago, the Good Friday earthquake. This was an earthquake. This was the strongest, the second most powerful earthquake ever since they came up with the Richter scale. There was an earthquake in Chile that was actually stronger than this one. It remains to this day the strongest North American earthquake ever measured. It was 9.2 on the Richter scale. It struck in southern Alaska. 125 people died again. Now think about this. A 9.2 earthquake. That's a monster of an earthquake. It lasted four minutes and 38 seconds. Four minutes and 38 seconds they had to sit through a 9.2 earthquake. Oh, wow. And you would think common sense tells us that the deadliest plane accident of all time would be a plane full of people falling out of the skies. That's not what happened. March 27th. 1977, two Boeing 747s collide on the runway in Tenerife, a small island in the Canary Islands just off the coast of Spain. One 747 was taxiing down the runway trying to pull off. The other 747, a Dutch 747, was attempting to take off at the same time. How did this happen? I'll tell you, but first, the NBC Nightly News from the following day. In the horrible air crash in the Canary Islands, what is known now is that at least 578 people died, the worst ever. What is not known now is exactly what caused it to happen. Here on a diagram of the Tenerife Airport in the Canary Islands with some models, we will show you what facts we have been able to get at this hour. The two planes were parked here at the terminal. Normally, to roll to the end of the runway, they, they would have used this taxiing strip but it was crowded with parked airplanes, and so they both were rolled out this way. KLM in front, Pan American behind it. Exactly how far, we don't know. KLM rolled down here, off into this little side place, down the taxiway to the end of the runway, and sat there waiting to take off. Pan American was rolling down behind it. At about this point, the tower said to the Pan Am pilot, are you clear of the runway? He said no. At about this point, he saw the KLM plane charging toward him. Turn, he tried to turn into this ramp to avoid it. It was too late, and they collided at that point. With the result, as we say, 578 people dead. In the end, 583 people died. Again, it was the worst airplane accident ever. And the planes, of course, were on 
the ground. What exactly happened? They were supposed to land in Tenerife. There was a much larger airport in the Canary Islands that both planes were destined uh, to land in, but there was a bomb exploded. Terrorist groups set off a bomb, and so they closed the airport, and so all the air traffic was diverted to Tenerife, which was a small little airport with one runway. It was a Sunday morning. There was only one air traffic controller on duty. The fog rolled in, and there were some significant communication problems. A whole bunch of safety changes came about because of this accident, perhaps the most important of them all. The captain is not infallible. If you think the captain is making a mistake, and the captain of the KLM made a mistake trying to take off not knowing, that the runway has not been cleared. They couldn't even see down the runway. And the other significant thing is anybody, anybody, any air traffic controller or pilot who flies an international route must be proficient in English. So there was no communication issues that happened on this date in 1977. One birthday, the very first artist ever to have their first five singles go to number one on the Billboard Hot 100. All I Want for Christmas is You is the biggest selling Christmas album of all time. She is the third best selling female artist of all time. Madonna is number one, Rihanna is number two, Mariah Carey is number three. She has a five octave range. The only criticism I have of Mariah Carey, who by the way, writes her own material, she gets bonus points for that. Because if she has a five octave vocal range, she kind of has a tendency to over sing. A little bit. There's something to be said about backing off a little bit and let the song be the song. And she holds the record for the most Billboard Hot 100 songs to go to number one by a solo artist. She has 19, one more than Elvis. Mariah Carey is 55 years old today. Special thanks to our super duper platinum sponsor. Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. I know it's going to be cold and rainy today, but it's not a bad idea to have the Alpine Air experts come out and take a look at your HVAC system. Make sure your air conditioning is going to be working when the heat of summer comes, and it will come. Special thanks to our friends at Pool to Spa Services. Another way to cool off this summer, get yourself a pool. Go ahead and talk to the gang there at Pool to Spa Services, and thank you to our super-duper awesome sponsor, Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista. Mike Minotti's got an opinion about combat vets. And then it's time to talk wild playoff hockey. Regular season is over. Now we really get intense. Austin Drade, broadcasting voice of the Bonanche Wild, will join me when we come back. You're watching Wake Up Bonanche Valley on the NCAA Live Channel. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Saber. Full service at a low, low price. Family roles change with time. You may find yourself being an unpaid caregiver to a loved one. Caregiving can be rewarding, but also stressful. Taking care of yourself is vital. Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington has low or no cost services for unpaid caregivers, such as in-home support, care supplies, and counseling. Connect in your local area by calling Aging and Adult Care at 800-572-4459 and mention you're interested in caregiver support. How do you think like an entrepreneur? I have had it in mind starting my own business. This is all really good to know right now. I am currently making a vision board. I am talking about my well-being, my personal finances, and habits that I would like to work on and to improve myself to be a better entrepreneur.
this is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I work with combat veterans, some of whom suffer survivor's guilt, and they often ask themselves the question, why? Why me? Why did I survive when others didn't? Now, what I want them to know is that the answer to this question is not coming externally. It's not coming from somewhere else. The answer to this question, why, is not coming from somewhere out there. Instead, the answer comes from their own life. Because most of these veterans have gone on to live productive and contributing beneficially to other people in their lives, despite the trauma that they still carry and live with. Why did they survive? To have built their lives and their families and to be there for others, as many have been and continue to be. That's why. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati. And that's my opinion. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. Get the tax break you deserve this week at Walker's Furniture as they offer a double sales tax discount or no money down special financing for up to five years with no minimum purchase. There's no better time to freshen up your living room, dine in style, or get that bedroom set you've always wanted. Plus, get a double sales tax discount or up to five years special financing with no money down. Making it the perfect time to match your tax return and spend less at Walker's. Hi, my name is Courtney, and AmeriCorps has given me the opportunity to change careers, learn new skills, and serve my community in a meaningful way. I am so glad that I chose AmeriCorps. My service with AmeriCorps has allowed me to make a difference in the lives of people that I wouldn't have otherwise made. My service in AmeriCorps allowed me to make huge impact to community having fun. AmeriCorps gave me the opportunity to serve and use my skills for the greater good. I highly recommend serving with AmeriCorps. You will change your life. Oh, look at this. This would look really good in the kitchen. Or, or the living room. Just look at it. New windows are a work of art. Upgrade your home's windows and get cash back from Chelan County PUD. This is going to look great in the house. Well, the regular season is a done deal. It is playoff time, and playoff hockey is another beast altogether. Don't take my word for it. This guy knows what he's talking about, making his very first appearance on Wake Up Financial Valley as the broadcasting voice of the Financial Wild, Austin Drade. Hello, my friend. Hello. Happy playoff time. It's good to be here. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Uh, as we always do when we visit with Austin, we recap the week that was real quickly. Uh, up in Victoria Wednesday, pretty tough loss. We got we're still stuck at that magic number of three points uh, to lock down the fourth seed. But on Friday, uh, a nice 4-2 victory, a hard-fought game, very physical. A lot of checks, a lot of, a lot of chippiness going on. But when Angie pulled out uh, what they needed to do, 4-2, thanks to a certain defenseman. As we roll highlights <laughs> from Friday night, uh, talk about, uh, talk about uh, a very good game. Uh, against a very good team. Absolutely. Well, the first goal I know is going to come up is uh, Evan Friesen scoring the uh, opening goal of the game. That one came just 350 into the game. Uh, Puck luck was really on the side of the wild on uh, on Friday night. Kent Iso guy's shot got tipped into the net from in front with Friesen, and uh, that made it one to nothing. The weird one, though, I don't think anybody had better puck luck that I've seen in a long time than Carter Prasovsky. Uh, shot one down the uh, right wing glass, just planned on dumping it in, maybe get a change behind the player, something like that. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's an exit door partway down the ice, I think right inside the blue line, right where the linesman is stationed, and uh, just hit the, uh, the stanchion just right because the goalie came out of the net to uh, get the puck, and the Puck made a hard left turn and went right to the net. So a two to nothing game after one, two to nothing game after two. Uh, the Wild didn't. Nobody scored in the second period. 
But the Wild really jumped on the uh, face-off dots, started getting some extra chances in the second period. Third period, Carter Prasovsky again with a, uh, a uh, second chance goal on his own chance in front of the net. Uh, Graham Sward came out of the, sent one out of the corner, uh, popped one up in the air and just didn't come off the stick right. But it stayed there long enough, so he batted it in out of midair and uh, gave up one late, but a uh, big game for the Wild on uh, on uh, Friday night to get the 4-2 to win. And uh, Wild are uh, picking up home ice advantage and uh, hopefully an extra playoff game at home as a result. When I watched the extended highlights as opposed to the trim down version that you just saw, this looked like a team that was playing for that fourth place thing. They had a certain energy to them on Friday night. They had a certain energy. They had a certain uh, willingness to sell out and get the job done on Friday night. Uh, you talk about guys jumping in front of uh, pucks and uh, protecting their goaltender, really standing up for Brendan G uh, in the net, but making sure pucks didn't get through to him. They saw passes that were coming. They were uh, they were thinking and playing a step ahead of Victoria for most of the night. And kudos to Mr. G, too. He had a great night. He had a fantastic night. 35 saves and uh, made some big ones for us in that one. Uh, they got it down to a couple of goals a couple of times. Could have been, uh, been a little dicey there at the end, but Guys uh, scored enough in front of him, and he stopped a lot of shots in that game, a lot of big shots to uh, help us get that win. In your memory, and I went and did as much research as I could, it's, it's limited availability. Again, as you mentioned, Carter, as a defenseman, had a hat trick. I don't recall a Wenatchee Wild defenseman in any league that they've been playing for the last 15 years, a defenseman for the Wild getting a hat trick. That is rare. I don't know that there's been one either. The, the WHL organization that has become the Wild has only had two. And that hasn't happened in 15 years, so uh, it's it's very very rare, uh, more rare than I thought it was when I started uh, looking it up. But no, a, a hat trick from a defenseman you don't see that very often. But if there was uh, one guy on the team, maybe two guys on the team who would get it, uh, Graham Sward would probably be one. Carter Prasovsky would definitely be the other. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion that we already have a pretty good idea who's going to be the Chico's Bail Bonds Austin Drade when <laughs> Wild Player of the Week. But we don't want to spoil that. So that was on Friday. We clinched the thing. So obviously, you want to rest all of your best players. Most of the front line rested. And that was the case on Saturday against Everett. Six to two, no big deal. Everybody at that point was pretty much locked in. And so that's what we did on, on Saturday. It, uh, Kento rest, uh, Isogai rested. Uh, I believe Carter rested mm -hmm. and others as well. Yeah, Landon Young was uh, resting that game as well. Uh, it was a game that uh, wouldn't have changed our playoff position, wouldn't have changed Everett's playoff position, uh, wouldn't have changed any uh, any draft spots or anything like that for anybody. So uh, that was a game uh, we talked about blocking shots. And uh, the uh, uh, couple of the guys, Carter and Kenta and Landon, uh, they picked up a little hail damage in the game on Friday night. Yeah, so. like I said, that was a physical game. The it, Friday night victory was physical. It was a physical game. They uh, they caught some pucks uh, blocking shots and keeping them away from the net. So those guys especially, if it's a game that's uh, not going to change anything of significance, uh, go ahead and take those guys out, get them some, uh, some extra rest, and get them ready for the playoffs. And, uh, and that's what we did. And now it is playoff time. The Kelowna Rockets and the Wenatchee Wild, these two teams are as evenly matched as you can think of. Kelowna finished just one point behind us. They won their last game of the year. So the Wenatchee Wild, 34-34-0, and 72 points. We're locked in as number four, coming in as the number five seed. The Rockets, Kelowna, 33-34-1, 71 points. These two teams, now four and five is always a good matchup because they're pretty close to one another. One point difference between the, both teams, almost identical records. This could be a real barn burner of a series. I, I'm expecting this one to be a long and hard fought series. Uh, you talk about what Kelowna has to offer. They've got one of the best scorers in the league in Andrew Crystal. Uh, Yari Kikinen has uh, had our number a couple of times. Uh, we were able to pick up a couple of wins in this building and force one to overtime against them uh, back in November. But this is a game where uh, stealing one on the road, I think, is going to be all the more important. And it uh, would have been the same with Vancouver, all four games in that series we're one on home ice so uh, winning a game on the road and uh, and stealing one away from home I don't think you win the series without it even though the wild have home ice advantage in this one so so to recap uh, back on September 30th we lost to Kelowna three to five and then in the middle of a, a, a season long was it eight games in a row we won back in uh, back in October November yes. I think it was eight in a row uh, the fifth of those was a nice four nothing victory 
on October 28th as we roll footage of that. But that was an entirely different wild team in many respects before the trade deadline and really a different Kelowna team from uh, back in October 28th. Yeah, both teams have had a little bit of, uh, of turnover by uh, that point in late October. The Wild didn't have Matt Savoy back, but Connor Geeky was back in the uh, back in the lineup, and we didn't have uh, the players that came in from Swift Current and uh, McHaggerty and Fluker and uh, and Ward. So there have been uh, a few changes in the lineup since then, but uh, nothing uh, beyond those uh, top players. Probably nothing quite as uh, as significant, but there has been a little turnover. Uh, the lineup has really solidified itself. Our top players have really uh, locked themselves into their spots. So. I, it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different look as opposed to, say, the beginning of January, but uh, probably not quite as different as people might think. You mentioned the beginning of January, January 6th, we won a 6-3, to that's right, nine goals uh, right here in our barn, a 6-3 to victory, and that's when both teams, they had their rosters pretty much set, but they were still, everybody was still feeling out their roles, weren't they? Everybody, uh, I think, was still feeling out uh, where they're going to be the second half of the season, and uh, in that game, that was the first appearance for our uh, three new players in from Swift Current. So it was a little bit of a different look for our guys, and they were just getting their feet wet, hadn't, uh, hadn't gotten in before the morning skate that day. So it was uh, a chance for our guys to kind of get to know everybody and uh, get uh, the playing styles melded together. But uh, I think our guys have done a great job of uh, putting those playing styles together and really uh, coming together as a group over the last three months since. So this is the, the longest layoff since the holiday break. They, of course, they played on, on Saturday against Everett. They don't play again until right here in this barn on Friday night. And so before we get to the playoff schedule, what is uh, the wild schedule for this week? We have, almost, we have, what, six full days or five full days between games, essentially. So rest, some light skating, keep in shape, keep your diet, but don't overdo it. Mostly, kind of mostly. The guys had uh, Sunday off and uh, had a few of the guys skated on Monday, but uh, most of the team uh, did, had the day off if they wanted it. And uh, the rest of the week, the guys are uh, out there with uh, full practice, ready to go. But after, uh, after that practice time, we'll start to get very, very short because uh, with games basically every other day, if you're not playing, you're, uh, you're spending some of that time traveling. Let's talk about uh, the Rockets. So give me a quick. I give me. I'm playing these guys since January 6, and the three games before that, the two teams were essentially, from their core, different. What What can you tell me about uh, about Kelowna that, that we don't know since we haven't played them since January 6? Very good top line. Now we mentioned Andrew Crystal a moment ago. Uh, Tej Ginla, who's the son of Jerome Ginla, who's a Hall of Famer from the Calgary Flames. He's been one of their top scorers throughout the season. So they have a lot of firepower at the top. And uh, they have some solid depth as well. Probably not uh, the kind of depth that you'll see on those top three teams uh, above us. But uh, they've got uh, some pretty good depth on that team. And we mentioned Yari Kikinen, who's been excellent in, uh, in goal. Almost 30 wins for him on the season. So uh, a, a five seed, yes. A team that didn't quite get home ice. But uh, certainly no slouch for a, a first round matchup. Game one, uh, Friday night. Game two, Saturday night. They travel the game three. Tuesday in Kelowna, game uh, four Wednesday in Kelowna. It's a best of seven. Everything is best of seven if they need to. Games five, six, and seven will go back and forth and back, which you really don't want to do. Kelowna is not a particularly long trip, you know, as the crow flies, but it's still, it's not like the Tri-Cities or, yeah, or uh, Spokane or Seattle where the road trip really doesn't mean much as far as time in a bus. This is a bit of a, bit of a haul. It's, uh, it's not as simple as the two and a half hours to Tri-City or the three hours over to Spokane or Seattle. It's uh, it's not a bad trip, though. It's about four and a half hours, a little north of that. So uh, it's uh, it's not a bad trip. It's a nice, easy trip to make. Uh, plenty of good scenery to watch out the window. So, uh, But it is, uh, it is a, a trip that we'll probably uh, spend some time in the hotel and uh, get the bus legs out of us before we play a game that night. Four plays five, three plays six, one plays eight, that kind of deal. That's how it's stacked. The higher up you are, you, the lower the seed you play. Prince George looks good. Everett looks good. Portland looks good. Those are still, I think, the three teams to beat in the West, are they not? They are. Uh, one of the one of the things that I remember uh, uh, Regan Bartell, who's the play-by-play -play guy for Kelowna, saying is, uh, as as long as they win that game against Vancouver on Saturday night, which they did, they get to play Wenatchee, which is ideal because then they don't have to play one of the top three teams. Everybody's got those top three teams on their radar 
and uh, Kelowna was able to, and the Wild were able to uh, dodge having to take one of those teams on in the first round because you know you're going to get a good test from them. Real quickly before uh, we talk about the playoff packages and how you get your tickets, we haven't really talked about the Eastern Conference because they're not us, but there is one team in the Eastern Conference that might be the favorite to take the whole damn thing. Well, there are a couple. Uh, Saskatoon has been hot all season, but uh, Moose Jaw, they've uh, loaded up on some players during the, uh, during the stretch run, and they've got, I believe, seven NHL draft picks on their, uh, on their roster. Now they've been uh, just as hot as Saskatoon was early in the season uh, down their stretch. So there's probably two teams out there that uh, really have a good shot at uh, doing battle with somebody out here within the West for, uh, for that championship at the end. All right, Friday night, Saturday night, uh, hopefully we won't have a game five, meaning we sweep. Um, tickets, let's talk about that. How do, you, how do you pick them up? Single game tickets are on sale now through the, uh, through the website or uh, over the phone or in the office. Those are 20 bucks anywhere in the bowl. So uh, if you want to sit a little closer, sit uh, near center ice, find an open seat. Uh, you'll get some good value out of that. Or if you want to stay in your seat uh, in the wild zone down uh, in the end where we shoot twice, that's where, uh, that's where you've been all season. You like that seat? Keep hanging on to that seat and keep cheering the guys on uh, when they come at you uh, during the game. But any seat is 20 bucks. If you get the playoff package, you can roll it over into the season ticket for, uh, for next year. Any home games that we don't play. And uh, that one, uh, you have to buy them in full, but you get a per game discount down to 15 bucks uh, per game should we play all the way through. Is there any way for you, and you've been around this sport a long time, to describe to our viewers the difference between regular season hockey and playoff hockey? If you come Friday or Saturday night, you're going to feel kind of a different vibe in this building, won't you? Yeah. When we moved up from the BCHL to the Western Hockey League, I told people everything you love about the sport, the speed, the intensity, uh, that gets ramped up with the move to the new level. When you move to the playoffs, Everything you love about the sport, the speed, the intensity, the uh, in a lot of cases, especially late in the series, the desperation to keep your season going, that gets ramped up again. So everything that there is to love about hockey, you're going to see it at full tilt when you go to a playoff game. It is Wenatchee and Kelowna, the Rockets and the Wild, Friday night, Saturday night, Friday night, 7.05, Saturday 6, or is it the other way around? 6 o'clock on Saturday, 7 o'clock Friday. I, did, I got that right. I, I appreciate that. And uh, let's go wild. Let's, let's, let's make this place as intense as we can possibly make it. Let's close out with uh, what we always close out with, the Austin Drade Chico's Bail Bonds Wenatchee Wild Player of the Week. And I have a feeling it's going to go to Mr. Carter. Am I not well, correct on that? As much as I want to give it to Graham Sward for uh, tying the defenseman scoring record for our organization, which has either been tied or broken the last three years, uh, yeah, it's got to go to Carter. Did you see his facial reaction after he got the hat trick? <laughs> he was like, wow, like the best day of his life. That's the first one in his career. It's the yeah. first one for the organization in 15 years. So. Austin Drade, the broadcasting voice of the Wenatchee Wild, go wild. And hopefully, well, we'll see you next Monday, one way or the other. Fair yep. enough? So we well, tape on Monday. So does that, does that work for you? We'll, uh, we'll plan on seeing you on Monday. And if we uh, end up winning two up there and winning two here, so be it. Let's keep this going to like July. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind that at all. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley, and we will be right back. Hummer EV is everything you want in an all-electric vehicle. It's powerful, reliable, comfortable, and will take you anywhere you want to go, on road or off. Why buy one of those lesser EVs when you can have one that uses them for traction? Order your Hummer pickup or SUV today from Sangster Motors, batteries included. The Honda you want is here. Drive in the moment with the rugged and capable Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Find your adventure with great offers now available on the Honda you want. All from the 2023 Kelly Blue Books, KB Blue Books, KBB.com Best Value Brand. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. 
From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. Raising a family may have seemed overwhelming to your parents, but they weren't. Coach, teacher, life guide, caregiver. Family takes care of family. And as the circle of life continues, you now are their caregiver. It may seem overwhelming, but we're here to help you find the support services necessary so you can provide quality care to your elders. Call Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington at 1-800-572-4459. Well, as advertised, the clouds and the fog have rolled in. This is not a surprise. We've been telling you about this since the start of the week. It is raining lately. It is 37 degrees, and that's what we're going to have all day today. Nothing but rain, but just light rain just all day. We have a little extra time. We we'll th thought maybe we'd take one more tour around North Central Washington and the Wenatchee Valley with our cameras, and it looks like Uriah has switched things up on me, and he is more than entitled to do exactly that our number one canyon camera. You can see it looks like maybe way up on the East Wenatchee bench, maybe up by Painborn, might be raining a little harder than down on the valley floor. Uh, but everybody, everybody in the viewing area is gonna get a light rain. That's our number one canyon camera looking due east. Camera number two. Ooh, uh, boy, he threw me a loop. That's gotta be, oh, it's gotta be Lake Chelan. It's way too big to be a, be a river. Um, I'm gonna say Green's Knob. Yes, hey, I got one right. We should make this a quiz is what we should do. So good morning to uh, Lake Chelan from our Greens Knob camera, quite a ways up the lake. As a matter of fact, camera number three, it is snowing there. I want to say that's Rude Canyon. Am I correct, Uriah? I'm getting nothing from Uriah. That's McNeil Canyon. Oh, okay, that's, well, that makes sense. So somewhere out there is Lake Chelan. Now, uh, only this way, it's actually snowing up at McNeil Canyon. That's okay, it's a, that's about where the snow level is. The snow level is about oh, 2,600 feet right now, and that would certainly include McNeil Canyon. You can see it's snowing there. And finally, camera four. Uh, of course, the Hay Canyon camera, looking out over uh, Kashmir on this uh, Wednesday morning. If you don't like the weather, don't worry about it. It will be changing. In fact, when we come back, I'll do your complete. Easter weekend weather forecast. You're watching a Wednesday edition of Wake Up in Ashley Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Hey man, how's your arm? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions and that ibuprofen is a good option for me. The risk of addiction. It's not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road so you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs. Everybody's getting light rain right now, uh, raining lightly in Quincy, in Chelan, with some snow up. McNeil Canyon is already inside. Ellensburg getting some light rain, Afreda. Moses Lake here in the Wenatchee Valley, just almost imperceptible light rain. And that's what we're gonna have most of the day today is a fairly wet and rather chilly system it is rolling into the valley. In fact, it's beginning to seep its way in as we speak from the National Weather Service. One more look at your forecast. Rain all day today. Again, not a heavy rain, just consistent light rain. It'll taper off about six or so. Snow level right now is at about 2,600 feet. It's eventually gonna go to 4,000 feet this afternoon. Stevens is gonna get some snow that may stick to the roadway. Very little snow on Blewett or on I-90, and it's wet snow that's gonna come down, so it will dissipate rather rapidly. As you can see, our forecast high of 46, that's 10 degrees 
below normal. 35 for the overnight low tonight with a slight chance of some light rain. Snow level is going to go down to 2,500 feet, but by that point, uh, the, uh, the precipitation will be all but done. Partly sunny on Thursday, especially in the afternoon with a high of 53. Sunshine for the most part Friday with a high of 55. And for Easter weekend, no complaints here. 60 with bountiful sunshine on Saturday. 64 on the holiday itself. We welcome April with temperatures in the 70s. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.